welcome back to the channel. Scoutcrafter, one of the, the other creators on YouTube who does some really awesome videos, asked me about my drill press. And they use a camcorder, so it's sort of hard to get a, a, a good wide angle shot of this. But um, this is my, my Walker Turner. It's a Model 1100 drill press. I got it from a, like an estate sale on Craigslist. Got it, my sandblaster, an air compressor, uh, my workbench. Got a bunch of stuff. Really got it. Really got it for a good deal. It was uh, an unfortunate event for the the guy I bought it from. But anyway, uh, I was happy to to be there at the right time in the right place. But um, anyway, this is one of my favorite machines. It's it could stand to be cleaned up a little bit. Uh, I don't use it very frequently. It's uh, the table going up and down. It's it's sort of a chore depending on what size stuff I'm working on. That's my my biggest drawback from it is it's just not easy to to adjust the table up way high and then lower it back down. So I sort of wait till I have work that I have quite a bit of drilling to do and then I'll set it up. But when I got it, it was missing this rear plate here. And anyway, I, I had fabricated some stuff, but eventually I ended up getting on the eBay and buying the, the correct plate. And then my dilemma was how do I, how do I go about finding the like step pulleys and, and, working the gearing and all that stuff and I said you know what let me let me see if I can modernize this a little bit so so what I ended up doing and you can see here through my sort of my conduit work and I just hang stuff in the conduit um, is I put a static phase converter or this is a VFD technically this one I'll find the link for it uh, but it's a KB electronics or whatever um, just an absolute amazing device this is what, what it does is is it creates you I've got 110 single phase coming into this and then somehow through voodoo or whatever it turns the the single phase 110 into two uh, 220 volt three phase and the difference between single phase and three phase is you can you can expand or contract that frequency that that and, and create and it and like a, a really efficient means of controlling speed, which is important with drill presses. So if I want to speed this drill press up, I mean I could s slow it right down, or I can speed it right up. And then if I want to do something like power tapping, I can slow it right down, tap, and then stop and then go right backwards again so it's super super neat i mean if i'm if i'm drilling something large i can slow it right down and uh and actually you can overclock this to go to 110 percent i'm going to show you a picture when i was assembling this and i'll try to point out the dips pid switches i think they're called and and behind here with a normal VFD, you'll have to get in and, and program it to speed up or slow down or whatever you want to do, and that can be quite complicated. But this this particular model has a, a series of, well, you know what, shit, I'll just take it apart and show you. All right, so not the best light in the world, but maybe the other picture I have will be better. But these switches here, PID or whatever, they're, I'll, I'll see if I can correct myself if I'm wrong. But... We have max speed, minimum speed, deceleration, acceleration, and comp. And I don't, I don't exactly remember what the, the comp is for. But uh, anyway, it'll allow me to, like if I were to ramp up the acceleration, I could turn it on and have it start very slowly. Or I could have it start instantaneously. Conversely, if I go to stop it, when I hit the off switch, I can get it to just lock right up right now, or I can have it wind down slowly. That's, for for what I do, I just got to start up relatively quickly, stop relatively quickly, um, but not instantaneously, because what it does is it then generates heat to dissipate that energy in here, and then, like if you ever see a lathe wind down and stop, there's a big heat sink back there that takes in that load. But anyway, um, these switches here are what make this device better than the other ones. In my mind, that's my opinion. 
I'm sure there's much better stuff out there. But for me, for somebody who doesn't want to have to tinker around with the, the programming and all that other jazz, you know, this is perfect for me. This is ideal for this machine. And the fact that, that I can pick up a three phase, this is a half horsepower three phase. What is it? Is it a ball door? Leeson. Uh, it's a Leeson motor, good name brand motor. I think I picked it up, scratch and dent box on Amazon for 50 bucks or 65 bucks or something like that. It's unbelievable. But um, anyway, let me let me put the cover back on this and I will show you some of the other features of the drill press. All right, so the cover's back on. The, the, the novel thing about this drill press is when I oh, turn it on, turn the speed on. What I've got here is an automatic feed. So I can have this machine just set it up, punch it, let it go. I think I need to build a stop, come down, because eventually we'll just keep trying to drive. But um, but the auto feed is pretty neat on this machine. The retraction spring could use another turn in it. It doesn't automatically spring back. back. Um, but I've got some issues with the, the journal here. That could use new bearings in it. I've greased it, put new felt in the oil drip. Um, and anyway, that's another thing for another day. But the, the automatic drive on this is pretty neat. Um, this power twist, I think is the name of this belt, <laughs> is an absolute lifesaver for, for drill presses like this or any machine that sort of has a and captive pulley, there's no way without dropping the whole quill on this puppy to get a belt on here. So the power twist enables me to, to go ahead and just put a new pulley on here and not have to disassemble this whole thing. And for a guy like me that just wants to use the tools, getting into working is, is sort of half the battle, learning how I like the machine and all that other stuff. And one of these days I would love to turn this into a full on restoration project but not until I get a bigger shot. Um, anyway, the power twist, super handy for stuff like this. Uh, not, I wouldn't use it on a lawnmower or something that's got like high horsepower applications. They're expensive. They don't seem to take a load nearly as well as, as a typical V-belt. Um, they're good to get you by in, in, in this kind of application. So anyway, um, that's my drill press. Next time I, oh, uh, let me let me talk a little bit about the. It's got a, a Morris taper. Um, I'm gonna get a hammer. Yeah, I, if you've never seen a Morris taper, it's it's very interesting. You have a wedge that just comes in there and, and drives this out, and then when you want to put a new bit in, like let's say I want to drill a big. 4764 bit. You just line the tang up, shove it in there, and there's your drill bit. Um, I also have an e, um, e, ER20 or ER15 collet for this, and then a Weldon shank for some annular cutters. Um, again, I don't use the machine a whole lot, but but I try to try to keep an eye out for 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 this machine's. Uh, Morris taper number two bits and things like that. So anyway, it's very versatile uh, because I can change things out. Uh, I can get big tooling in here. Um, the half horsepower is probably, it could probably use a little bit more power, but you know, it's, it's what I've got. So, uh, zoom out a little bit. Anyway, I hope the lighting is really horrible today. So, anyway. Thanks again for watching. If you like this stuff, subscribe. Any comments, criticisms, input, I'd appreciate it. Thanks, have a good day.